The opinions and views expressed by the guests on this podcast are their sole responsibility and do not necessarily reflect the personal opinion of Letty and or Ash or those who collaborate with Dudas Media. How do I flirt with a girl? Like, how do I show I'm interested? And that's why I say coming out is so much more coming in. It's like an inward journey. You have to come into yourself. I was living a life that was so disconnected from who I actually am. You know that there's this thing that's different, but you don't really acknowledge it, and you just shut off to that side of yourself completely. Like, I think I'm gay, and then just like the feeling of suppressing it immediately. Like, you just feel it. It feels like a thought comes in your head and then you're just like shove it down like truly truly suppressing i just all of the very gendered questions that you have when you're first starting to date women it's like who does what hey everyone welcome to another episode in english we are extremely excited that we're starting to do this and we know that you've asked for more episodes with friends We just had a recent episode talking about situationships, and it's been the most listened to episode in our five years. Girl, What? in our five years, it broke every single record. That is how... With who? Rafa del Rio ah! and Diego Alfaro. <laughs> Rafa. But imagine how the dating world is going now that situationships was the most listened to episode in our five years. But this to say, it was us sitting down with two friends talking about things that happen in our daily lives and I think that's why we wanted to do this episode because we are in LA right now we texted two really good friends of ours and we were also trying to listen to your messages saying we've never talked about the lesbian world in this podcast And there is so much to say <laughs> that we wanted to invite two friends. One of them has a podcast called Made It Out. It literally talks about the lesbian beautiful world and all the struggles also of like the people that have come to the podcast. Another friend is one of our really close friends. We've known her for years. And we also know you have a beautiful story. Um, so we're just very excited to be here today. Welcome to Alex Trigger and Mal Glow. It's so beautiful to have you here. Glowinski. Glowinski. See, Glowinki, Glowinki. Glowinski, but it is great last name. Welcome to Se Regalando Us. We're super excited to have you here, girls, um, to talk about something we don't know, but we want to know. Lesbians. Tell us what you want to know. I'm scared that we're the mouthpiece. We could be here all day. <laughs> um, I think the first question, I, I was listening to a podcast you recorded together, both of you telling your stories of when you actually realized you wanted to be with a woman. And my first question is, we grew up in a world with zero representation. More and more we see it nowadays, but growing up there was only one way to think of ourselves as women and as girls. And the dream that we were sold since that moment was, you know, you marry a man, you build a house, you have the kids and the dog, and that is the only way we're going to be happy girls or happy women. So I want to know, because both of you are from America, it must be, there must be different things, but there also must be similarities. So what ideas did you grow up with? And at what moments did you realize, I might not identify with this dream that has been sold to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you want to go for it. I realized very young that I was not maybe the norm, or just completely straight. I was, you know, playing house with girls and and boys and I always wanted to kiss the the girls more than the boys. So I knew really young but then I moved to a part of the country, Texas where that just like was not even a thing. It wasn't discussed, it wasn't an option. So I started repressing my sexuality at a really young age and I went the full way of, you know, being with men, owning homes with men, you know, picket fence, dogs, all of it. And until I realized this is not for me. And what was the feeling? Like, how was it? Like, what was your internal talk as you're starting to realize, oh, maybe the dream home with a guy isn't for me? I don't think it was necessarily 
the gay thing that got me there. I think it was just a turning point where I realized I'm not happy. I have everything that I'm supposed to have. I have the house, the job, the car. I have all these friends. I have a great life and something is not right within me. I'm still very depressed. And it took a pattern interrupt getting out of all of that and essentially moving out of Texas and getting away from everybody that I knew and, and all of kind of the, um, the things that people knew about me and being alone and in silo to figure that out by myself. You haven't kissed a girl or anything before this moment. I had. You had. <laughs> you had experimented before with girls. It's so hard to explain. It's like you know, but you don't know. You know that there's this thing that's different, but you don't really acknowledge it. And you just shut off to that side of yourself completely and go in the direction that everybody tells you to. But that part is always there and it's always kind of whispering to you like, hey, this is something. So I only, I watched lesbian porn only. I was on Craigslist at a very young age looking, women seeking women, like trying to find girls who were also looking for other girls to meet. Um, when the opportunity presented itself to be with women or to hook up with women, I took the opportunity. But still in my mind, I never said to myself, I'm gay. I, it was never even an option. It was just, this is this thing that's there. And sometimes I lean into shut it. it down. Exactly. I just, but I think I've said this before, but I think when you're shut off to one part of yourself, you're shut off to every part of yourself. And so I was in careers that I wasn't happy with, friendships that I wasn't happy with. I was living a life that was so disconnected from who I actually am. And I think it all stemmed from being disconnected from my sexuality. To understand, was it, why did you keep it away? Did you think it was something wrong or did you see everybody else being happy and taking a path that didn't resonate with you? Like, what was it that made you think you had to hide it or you had to cover it or you had to, you know, go in a route that was clearly not making you happy? Like, what was the underlying feeling of all of this? I think it's both. I, what, I think society in general just beats being straight into our head through everything we see. Even growing up with straight parents, it's all we ever see. Right. And every so, movie, every TV show, every love story every that we up with, every, yeah. And then everybody you're around. And then when I moved to Texas, that's a pretty conservative part of the country. So it was very much like, what church do you go to? And, you know, I, then you're like, oh, fuck, like, this is what everybody here believes. I better just get in line or else I'm not going to fit in. And then wow. you start to conform. And I was so young. I was seven when I moved there. And the first question people would ask me is, what church do you go to? And then you go to church and you're hearing gay people go to hell. And then you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Like, if I ever let this out of the bag, this is not going to be good. Mm -hmm. So it's a total, um, you're not conscious when you're doing this. You're just, you're just pushing things off to the side and you're living life the way everybody says that you're supposed to live it. But I think that's only sustainable for so long. Eventually it, it beats at the door and it's like, this is not right. Love that. I want to go deeper, but I also want to hear <laughs> Alex's because I know it's a very different story. Yeah, different. I, I like to say like same, same, but different because Mal and I are so alike, but obviously there's a lot of differences in our story. I'm from a suburb of San Francisco, which is like gay capital of America. Um, so there's a lot of acceptance and it's very progressive, but you didn't see lesbians. Like, I didn't see lesbians. And one thing you mentioned was um, whether you get to, like, live this American dream that we've all been sold or you decide to take a different path and become a lesbian. But what do you do when you still crave that dream? Like, it's not like one or the other. I'm not someone who came out and is like, fuck marriage. I don't want to get married. I don't need kids. I'm going to live completely alternatively. No, like... I still want those things. Like, I still want to live this life that I've pictured for myself. It's just a little bit different in this way. And I think that's something that still you kind of have to 
deal with or like excavate inside of you it stems back to a lot of internalized homophobia where you're like I still want this life where I get married I still imagine myself having a wedding I still imagine myself being a mom and having the family but it just wasn't working with me and men and so how do you still get to have all of those things and you do so I think the classic idea of like now you're a lesbian, you don't need to get married, you don't need to have kids is like not quite right for me at least. There's plenty of lesbians who are like, I don't need all that, which is great, but still feeling like you you get to have all those things as well. So it was maybe more the fear of you thinking, if I choose this path, I'm not going to get yeah. all of these things I wanted. So I better like stick to this line yeah. where I am for sure going to have the possibility. And also my parents' biggest fear, I would say, like coming from a, a more progressive family. Of course, they're like, yeah, you're, you, you know, but the first thing my mom said to me when I came out to my family over pizza at a restaurant was, oh honey we're modern like it it was okay like I knew it would be okay and they'd be accepting but what actually came up a few weeks later was all this fear of like but I wanted this life for you like I want you to have kids I want you to be in love and being married and have what I've had you know I want this life for you and that was the big fear but I was like mom like I can have that like it's it's the beauty of being in, you know, this modern time where that still exists for How us. I met you when you weren't um, <laughs> lesbian. <laughs> you were a lesbian, but you weren't in a, relation a lesbian relationship. Um, I don't know how to say that appropriately. I, mean, I, say, I joke like when I was straight. Obviously, that when wasn't you were true. Straight, but, when you were you know, straight. I was living a straight life. A very straight life. Um, and how did you knew? I know... Um, from the times we hang out during that period of time that you were struggling a lot with, I remember you and I talking about wanting a relationship, wanting a serious boyfriend, but gravitating more towards more casual dating, more hookups and stuff like yeah. that. And I remember we like used to talk a lot when we watched those horrible, um, what they're called, uh, reality TV at Janice. Yeah, love it, still love it. Still <laughs> exactly. Love all the trash TV. That didn't die with yeah. the lesbian. Uh, <laughs> and um, how, how did you figure out, like I'm curious yeah. about your journey from being like this, or at least in my mind, you were like this free, free like sexual woman, woman, and like all the men were always looking at you. You were always like yeah. that person and like, and then, seeing you now in this beautiful relationship you have i'm just curious not only yeah. as in the pockets but as a personal yeah. friend like what was the internal walk towards yeah. that it's it's difficult i you know we've spoken about this a little bit but like i i definitely think that there is um something that happens especially with maybe if you're struggling with there's a lot of lesbians who just know that they're lesbian and they do not want to have sex with men or even if they do have sex with men it's like they hate it like it wasn't the case for me so it's a little bit trickier to figure it out essentially because you're like well I can do this like I I don't know like what's the what's the problem here um and I think there is something with being a bit promiscuous or like you know getting to this age where you can you know hook up with people or you're dating and having casual encounters especially younger um and in college and those kind of experiences and there's something with not being your full authentic self and feeling a disconnect and having like we've talked about like a void and you're filling it with certain things and i think definitely a craving of love and affection um, was something i struggled with and a lot of those experiences I was seeking for just love and affection through these casual encounters and it wasn't happening. It would, it would never fulfill me. It would never feel good at the end of the day. And I know a lot of people can relate to that, whether they're straight or gay, yeah. it doesn't matter. Um, and it was until I cut that off before I even came out within myself, to myself, that I had to cut that off because I knew it was not serving me. And it wasn't even like, oh, I need, I, I was like really 
you know, hooking up with people every week. It was just that like, okay, the casual thing isn't what's fulfilling me. I want a relationship at the time with a man. And I know I need to to stop all this and stop engaging in these casual behaviors with men who clearly didn't give a shit about me. And once I stopped that and then started doing a lot of internal work, I know we relate on this a lot. Um, it wasn't until then that it all started unfolding. And it took like a year of this unfolding process even before I came out to myself. Like it was a big inward journey, a spiritual journey until I was able to just, just even scratch the surface. Uh, so kind of like the spiritual awakening, I like to say, led into like the gay awakening, but it took like a whole year. I don't know, it was like, just deep self-exploration. And that's why I say coming out is so much more coming in. It's like an inward journey. You have to come into yourself and things start opening up naturally. It forces you to kind of pick apart everything that we've been told we're supposed to like yeah. and really question like, who am I? What is my authentic self? Which is a hard thing mm -hmm. to do, but it forces you to face that square in the eye and kind of do that digging to yeah. figure out who you are. And honestly, do that digging whether or not you're gonna find out you're gay in the end. Like, you know, it's like, I didn't set out on the journey being like, I need to figure this out. I feel like I'm gay. No, I mean, now looking back, I'm like, damn, you were pretty gay. Duh. Like, why was I making out with girls in high school? Like, to I kissed a girl, like, I don't know. There was a lot of signs, <laughs> but um, yeah. I want to I wanna hear more uh, from the two of you about this coming in thing. I know you've said before that you don't like the terms coming out and it's more about coming in. But what was it like realizing yourself you were gay first and then telling the world? Or was it a, a big process? Was it, um, did it feel peaceful? Did it feel... Uh, weird at first like what was that internal because I feel like a lot of people that might listen to this can be in either side of this journey that we've talked maybe they're trying to fill a void maybe they've had signs and they've didn't want to hear them maybe they know but there's also a lot of internal homophobia not only coming from outside so I also want to know if you guys within yourselves encounter that denial at first um I don't know. I want to hear more about like the internal processes that we barely hear people ever talking. Like we usually yeah. see someone in their Glorious. straight life and then they're like, and this is the relationship I'm at now. In the trenches. You want to know about yeah, the trenches? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, but to help people out, what if we actually talk about every single question, doubt, fear, you know? I have a friend that once told me that the biggest struggle was I didn't want to be a lesbian. Yeah. Like, I just didn't want to be a lesbian. She was like, I now that I'm a lesbian, I'm like, oh, this is the best thing that ever happened to me. But in that moment, my struggle was like, I know that I'm a lesbian, but I don't want to be one. So mm -hmm. just adding to, to Letty's, <laughs> just adding it to Letty's 20 questions. It sucks <laughs> that the word has so much power. Like. I, I didn't like the word lesbian. I'm still unpacking that, you know? It's like, I don't want to be a lesbian. It just sounds so weird. I don't know, but. When you start to face what we've been taught that we need to like, what we've been taught we need to gravitate toward, which is men, and this is what we need to follow, worship, you know, whatever. And then you start to unpack that and you're like, You, you, you start to realize, I don't need the attention. I don't need the validation from men. So now you're looking at the world kind of more of an objective view and you're going, okay, hold on. Actually, this is trash. Yeah. And then you do get mad because you're like, we are living in such a patriarchal world. And so I think you do get pissed off. And you're we're like, well, almost our existence as women, what we were told was to please the eye of the man and you're like this is why I exist right yeah. and then you strip that away and then you start to see things and you're like wait 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 and it does make you mad you are fucking angry so I think a lot of these stereotypes like okay they might be true but I'm so proud of that and I love that and you can look I think the looks 
thing is so do you remember that one time we were out at a bar mal joined our group like a year two years two years after okay so two years after so of course there's this new girl in the group who's like my fucking twin we were having the best time so we go out to a bar and she comes and you're in these heels that you're like clearly so uncomfortable and i was like mal you don't have to wear these heels anymore like what are you doing like you don't have to and your face was like i remember that night <laughs> you were like wait i don't like and wear the heels i still wear i'm wearing heels today but like for me you know but like it's a different it's kind of like just a different energy it's like we're stripping away all that we've been taught all that we've done to look a certain way to be a certain way for the gaze for the male gaze mm -hmm. and now it's like wear the fucking sneakers yeah. i think that's what's great about gen z they're they're all about like sweats and sneakers i'm like i really relate the lesbians have been yeah. on this forever <laughs> i know gen z is copying yeah us, the bitch. lesbians already knew <laughs> <laughs> So was it different when the journey was to go inward versus telling the world or showing the world? Like I'm thinking when you say you had to get out of Texas to find yourself or when you're saying you gave yourself this full year to like dive deep, like what did that look like? How did it unfold? Yeah, I mean, so for me, I had quit my I, I was a producer at BuzzFeed Tasty which is where also one thing you mentioned was kind of like you had all these things of like you weren't happy in this you weren't happy in this I had so much going for me like my career was booming like there was there was so much activity you know going all the time and like um the the one thing that I couldn't figure out was relationships and it was like failed relationship after failed relationship and I was like what is going on like I think that's why I like I'm a bit woo woo and um my energy just would go all towards figuring out love and relationships and in the meantime career just was kind of like taking off because I was like it was just kind of came naturally to, to me and I was just you know doing what I loved and like sharing silly videos online and um and So when things were so great and everything was working in that way, like nothing was working in love. And I was like, how do I figure this out? And so love for me was like the big catalyst of like, this is how, this is why I need to do work. I feel like everyone has something where they're like, okay, I can't figure this out. And I need to just dive in to, to figuring it out. And, you know, whether that's like realizing that you're engaging in certain patterns and you start to look back and you're like, everything looks the same. Like all the guys just started look, looking like, like emojis I, or like Sims. I don't know that everyone was the same. And I was like, they just, it was like an energetic person with a different face. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? This is a little bit weird. Like, and I wasn't spiritual at the time all that much. So then I just started to kind of like, open up in that way and everything in my life was changing and I had just quit my job and so I was home all the time with no nothing to do like essentially and it was just like so much change and then you know so much inward work that just started to unfold and so I spent that whole year kind of diving into that and getting into spirituality and all of this but still wasn't out to myself And then the pandemic hit, I moved home and um, just to be with family and uh, spend time there. Cause you know, I, I was like alone in a one bedroom apartment in LA. I was like, why am I gonna stay here? Um, and then in my childhood bedroom, um, after this year of spiritual discovery, I was journaling and then I started to have all these like little flashbacks um, in my room and I could picture myself because it was the same bedroom I had grown up in. My parents never moved. So I could picture my little self like having these feelings of like, oh, maybe I'm gay or like, I think I'm gay. And then just like the feeling of suppressing it immediately. Like you just feel it. It feels like a thought comes in your head and then you're just like shove it down. Like truly, truly suppressing. Um, and those moments and memories, it's no mistake that I was home journaling in my same childhood bedroom, you know, and the, the divine timing of it all. Um, but again, like I've talked about on your podcast, if like 
it can happen for you once your like nervous system can hold it, when you finally are able to face it without it being so overwhelming that you just have to suppress it. Like when you're safe enough in yourself, when you're safe enough in your location or wherever it is, when you're just safe enough, um, then it can, you know, kind of start to come out. Because for so many people, the even thought of questioning sexuality puts them in such a dangerous place, yes. right? Not only Fight, fly, freeze, fawn. everything. And yeah. like so many families are like completely homophobic and yeah. like without even realizing like, right there, everyone's like, no, no, no. I love gays until your son is gay totally. and you're fucking yeah. freaking out in the middle of the living room. But I love that what you say, because I remember the only other episode that we have about talking outside of the closet is this person, a friend of us was telling us that only when someone was like, Hey, it's okay. Yeah. That he realized that, Oh, Oh, is it? It like, what? and he was like, I hang on to that thought for years. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that is okay. So I, my question was, did you experimented with the idea for a long time of like, what happens if I'm gay? Like what was those days between you suppressing yeah. it and like now having this safe space? And I would like to know both of these, like what was the day you came out? And I say it with like a quotation, cause I mean, does, do you like, I know like a lot of people are like, please like stop saying coming out. But like, when was the first day you admitted it to someone like, Hey, I'm, yeah. I'm gay. Well, I also didn't walk around. I think you are the same, like maybe, but, I, I didn't walk around feeling like I'm closeted my whole life. You know, I wasn't like, oh, this is something that I've been keeping a secret. I like genuinely hadn't slowed down enough to even think about that myself, you know? And it wasn't until this moment where I was at home in my childhood bedroom when these memories were flooding back, not even flooding, like one at a time, boom, like a little like lightning strike. So like little memory here, little memory here. And then when you're like, okay, I'm gonna like start thinking about this and they come more often, you know? But then it's, but then it's like, I, I wasn't feeling like, oh, I'm closeted and I can't speak about this. It was like, until I was ready. And, you know, I think that's the beauty of kind of being a little bit older when that happened is that I felt like the second it happened, I was like, I'm gonna switch my dating profile. Like, you know, again, yeah, I'm a very free spirit. Like you, you said at the beginning, like that's not something that was not me. I was just like in the you were in the wrong free, pool. Yeah, exactly. You were in the wrong pool. pool. But <laughs> at the wrong bar, girl. You were at the wrong bar. Wrong bar. <laughs> what about you? I had to get away and be alone. My parents are from Chicago, like very progressive family, but I was raised by the culture so much. When you're your friends, your everyone school, around you. How can you not be? Yes. And that was what kind of told me suppress, 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 get rid of this. And when I moved away from Texas to LA, I had no idea I was moving to figure out my sexuality. It was just, this is, I have to get away from whatever this is. And when I moved to LA, it was the first time that I started toying with the idea of no one here knows me, maybe I could switch my app. Mm -hmm. I went on several dates with men. I slept with several men when I was here. And I remember it vividly one day I'm sitting on my couch and I'm like, no, I'm not going to do seeking women and men anymore. It's going to be only looking for women. Mm -hmm. And I went on a date with one girl. I was It was the most nervous I've ever been in my life. I took four shots of vodka <laughs> at the bar oh, vodka. down the street. Oh, God. Honestly, I'm a vodka girl. You are? I, oh, yeah. Girl. Like, I, you I'm can't like, say that in this podcast. I know. You got to pretend. Got tequila. Got to pretend. I knew tequila. Now I'm tequila, but back then I was like... Straight, straight mail with vodka. Yeah, vodka has been ruined for me for college. College? No, I can't even look at I vodka. Look no, at I can't. Vodka, uh, uh. vodka uh, and any type of juice, like cranberry, juice? pineapple, oh, orange I like juice. pineapple, but orange, fuck a screwdriver. Like, <laughs> screwdriver, like, be that belongs to men. Screwdrivers are in the toolbox. My God. Keep that My in the God. toolbox, bitch. <laughs> Uh, four shots of straight vodka, no yeah, juice. No. I went on this date and I had a complete, it was like, oh. I, and four, were you it. like that falling was first? Or you can hold four shots? Because no, I, I can be like. <laughs> <laughs> you would be straight out. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so that was the first date with a woman ever? Like yeah. for you? It was my first like actual date with okay. a woman. And I was Walking freaking out. It. I, well, I, I took, I went outside my house. I walked down the street. I went to a bar, took four shots of vodka and I was freaking panicking about 
who pays? And how do I flirt with a girl? Like, how do I show I'm interested? I just, all of the very gendered questions that you have when you're first starting to date women. It's like, who does what? And that's like scary. And so I go on this date. We talked all night. It was... I, I tell this story, it's very awkward because then we're standing in front of my, she goes to drop me off, we're both standing in front of my apartment building and we just stand there for like 45 minutes talking and I'm like, this is so awkward, like, do I invite her up to my house? Is anyone like, going to kiss anyone? No, like, I don't know, I'm like, oh this, is, I'm, this is day one lesbian, I have no idea. We go up to my apartment and we're sitting, I have an L-shaped couch and she's sitting on one couch and I'm sitting on the other what? couch. And we, I know, it's so awkward. Oh, but I wasn't going to make the move. Yeah. So, I mean, why not? I just, I, I, was, I was too nervous. I was too okay. She yeah, was yeah, just yeah, yeah. coming out. I, was yeah, just, yeah, yeah, I hadn't yeah. even gone out yet. Give me a break. And um, yeah, nothing happened that night. We didn't even kiss. But when she left, I was like, fuck, this is definitely But the you were thing. into it. I was into it, yes. Yeah. I, it was my gay panic But you were moment. just scared. I think okay. we all go through like yeah. a gay panic moment where we're oh, like, yeah. oh my God, like this is what has been this missing piece. Yeah. Holy shit. And I did not, I was not gonna, I was not ready to intake that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I. You you know, it's a lot at once. That's why it's yeah. like, it has to go in stages. Like you can't overwhelm your system. Like, I think there are like, yeah. there, there are a lot of similarities in. in each process. Yeah. You we can't all go just through. jump in head first. Sometimes, I mean, I like to do that a lot. But I think sometimes that's not so great for the psyche. Learn that. Maybe you should slow it down. Guys, I have this question, and you have to tell me about the sex. I was just. I've ah. read and heard so much. It started with We Can Do Hard Things. Yes, I heard it, this like full Lennon. episode of like. Uh, honestly, reading, lesbian un- sex. reading Untamed was a big. Oh, dude. A big, a big I, factor in. in I, yeah. This was like here when we were going to start. And you, you read and that book and didn't become a lesbian? I like, girl, I, she, I was. <laughs> honestly, yeah, good for you. She came to our podcast. She came to our podcast. I know. Podcast. I listened to that. I listened to, I listened Love to all her stuff. But my, my friend, when I was struggling, was like, that's how it happened for you wow (laughs) such a beautiful book but anyhow i was listening to uh one of their episodes with a sex therapist and they were saying all of this data of how sexual satisfaction is so much better like higher in lesbian couples and i was just wondering like how was it switch to having sex with women like, is it that much better? Is it because we know our bodies better? Is it because there's better communication? Is it... Communication is huge, I think. Is it even not, is it even without the communication, come or, on. Or get real. <laughs> yeah. but I, I think it can also be because there's not one person thinking about their pleasure only. Yes. Like, you might actually be aware that there's someone else in bed. Women innately, like, we're like, we want to please, we want to take care of, nurture. I want to add a question. And do you miss, like the penis you know what there is a whole world out there you do not have to give it up (laughs) (laughs) oh i'm telling you i didn't know what a strap-on was before i became a lesbian i didn't know i didn't know anything about the life i didn't know lesbians existed i didn't know anything which is crazy i don't know why i clearly knew because all of the lesbian porn probably gave you (laughs) all the insights i I guess i didn't go down that route but like oh my gosh like uh, you know, I, as someone who has enjoyed sex with men, you're like, okay, well, what what does that leave me? I'm not going to be fulfilled sexually. There's plenty of ways to be fulfilled sexually, by the way. But, like, strap-ons. Like, I mean, there's a lot of, like, uh, narrative about, you know, like, you know, I feel like some people don't relate to it or, like, you know, it gets too heteronormative. But if you are someone who enjoys something, like there's there's definitely something for you and yeah it's fun it's fun to explore i mean the numbers are there that's why i'm the asking numbers this are question there yeah. i had one orgasm with a man before oh, i started sleeping with one actually in one. how many years of having sex i started having sex when i was 16. one so 16 orgasm. i started having, and when i yeah one orgasm and then Damn. i started sleeping with women and i found out the problem was not 
me. I think in my mind, like I could have sex with men and like maybe it's it's probably not great, but like disassociate in my mind and just like be in my own fantasy or something. That's but, a real thing. Yeah, yeah. I like definitely. Yeah. And, you know, like I say, like we, we kind of talked about this before. It's It's interesting when you're like, Someone, I mean, again, with like labels, I've I've never really related to like being fully a lesbian or bi. I don't really know. I just am someone again who's free. I don't really like labels ever. Even in my career, like I don't really box into one thing, so it's never felt that genuine to me. Um, I see myself with women just because of now an emotional connection. But like, what do you do if you have enjoyed sleeping like with men? If you've like been able to. And this isn't, this is not on um, men's performance, <laughs> by the way, it's more like <laughs> disjointed, but yeah. I don't know, it's a, it's a, there's a like hairy gray areas that like aren't talked about as much because when you're a lesbian, a lot of the times it's like, you're not a good enough lesbian or like full enough lesbian unless but then you're again, like, I de- I like, I now like, what's the word? Like reject. Oh. I denounce. Yeah, I denounce. I denounce. Yes. I denounce everything that has ever been in my past. I don't know. Like, it's, but it's then again, hairy... we're doing a disservice to ourselves because you're moving from one label to another label, like, or you're moving from one box yeah. to another box. If you're pretending to just be a lesbian like this, or even like the label, yeah. like you said, what if I'm just, you know, where I'm at and loving what I'm loving right now, loving and loving. we just totally. don't know. Yeah. There's something think, for everyone. Yeah. I think it's an important conversation. I would say I work in extremes. So I went from like being completely <laughs> yeah. hetero to completely lesbian. I hate men, fuck men, you know, whatever. But recently I've been very aware of the importance of checking in with yourself mm-hmm. and saying like, could I ever entertain sleeping with a man again? For me, I genuinely don't think I could. It do, I always come back to no. Like I feel in my truest self and living my truest existence when I am with a woman. Um, but I, I which think is okay. I think yes. it's a fluid conversation though, and I think that is something like to your point how the labels like lesbians want you to label yourself as a lesbian. It's easier the when world, we just fit, the yeah the world. Yeah, it's versus, easier when we fit people in categories. Yeah. But it, it's important to kind of question those things, even if you always come back to the same answer. Well, maybe it's like the 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 physical versus the emotional again, like that conversation. Because it's like okay, you're talking about dating a man again. Um, I just don't know after the depth of like connections I've had with women if I could feel fulfilled. But if we're talking about straight physical, yeah, probably could. It's crazy I mean, what you say about like the connection that we have with women because the level of depth yes. in my women connection, I've only been straight my entire life. I had multiple opportunities to be um, with a girl and I just never felt like I just never felt inclined to, but I absolutely identify like the intimacy of, and the depth and of the, like the relationship I have with Ale that's standing here with Letty, like those are hard places to reach with men Mm -hmm. overall. Like either you're a lesbian, you're queer, whatever you can't Mm -hmm. arguably you can't. So I do, I totally understand why someone that is seeking for a deeper connection can like literally gravitate towards women where like most of us are trying to do the work. Most of ours crave relationships and intimacy. Um, I wanted to ask you, do you guys grieve anything from that life of being a straight woman that you've lost? Is there any grieve and what has been like the best surprise being in a lesbian relationship not not because it doesn't matter if you're in a relationship being lesbian i definitely do i think it's not talked about it's like it's something that's you know maybe hard to talk about but it's important to because like that's such a part of the journey again coming out is in stages it's unfolding it's ever unfolding and The one thing that's really big for me that I still grieve is the opportunity to have kids with my partner 
biologically. It's huge. And I'm sure a lot of people out there are like, that's, that's what I will never give up. And that's, you know, it's fair. It's also like ingrained in us. It's biological. There's so much with that. There's, there's a beautiful thing to see both of your partners reflected in a child. The one thing that I always come back to, of course, you know, aside from being in love and wanting to be with this person that I've chosen and has chosen me. But, um, the one thing that I come back to is you never get a guarantee, whether you're straight or whether you're gay, like you don't, you do not get to dictate how your life unfolds and you can have a kid with a person and you're like this is great and never the, see look them we, again exactly never see them again maybe they die unfortunately and you know a step parent has to come in maybe they literally are a deadbeat parent maybe you get divorced in an awful divorce and have to share the kid you never or know maybe, what maybe you can't get pregnant maybe you can't with the get person pregnant. You, and you are gonna have to yeah. go through the same medical process yep. that a gay couple exactly. will have to go just through. because you're straight does not mean that you get that guarantee. So that's one thing that I'm like, oh, like no one gets that guarantee. And yeah, our our story, our life is gonna be different in the way we bring in kids. We already know that going in, but there's people, you know, who are straight, who don't know that going in, but that that's gonna be their life, you know? So it's like, you just, that's one thing that kind of gives me peace in that. Cause it is a little bit hard. It's like stings a little bit. You're like, oh, I want, you know, you want to see the, the product of your yeah Do i've you never really you don't yeah i gotta be honest i think i've lived such a straight existence and i tried so hard to like want that life i tried so hard to go down that path and really commit to it and now that i'm on the other side of it i'm just like mm -hmm. whatever comes with this i'm so much happier and i'm so much more myself and um so I don't know. I mean, I guess I haven't really explored that thought as much. Well, I'm still, you know, genuinely happier and so much more myself. But it doesn't, I think the piece of it is that it doesn't just wipe away every, there's still going to be things you have to, you know, again, grieve or like things that pop up. Whether it is, you know, the kids thing. Even if you don't want kids, it's going to be like, okay, like you, you're grieving the the family you might have lost in this or the friends you might have lost in that. But like, there is so much more to gain if you are living your authentic yeah. authenticity. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. There's no price yeah. for authenticity. authenticity. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you both. Uh, well, Mal, you've heard uh, at this point, I don't know how many stories of coming out because that's what girls come to your podcast to talk about. Have you found any... Um, I know every single story is different, but any similarities? I'm thinking right now for the people that are going to listen to this episode and maybe try to find themselves here or in anything they they listen to. Like what have been the what have been the biggest lessons if you had to put together all of the stories that you've heard? No. Yeah, that's a big that's a oh, big Jesus. question. Or what's one thing everyone that comes to your podcast shares like is it a moment of bravery is it a friend coming in and saying like you're like don't worry about it? like what is that makes if maybe like not only a pattern of like coming out but like if all the stories are so different what is like one common denominator that helped people reach more of their authentic self And is there always light on the other side? I think that's also something that would be good to know for everyone that's struggling to even saying out loud or like, is there always the sense of I'm finally here or I finally. I feel like eventually. Yeah, eventually, it's, it's tough. It's I think, not like maybe immediate. But. Yeah, I think a lot of people we all have very different situations. Yeah. And for some people, this is extremely heavy and in some cases, life-threatening. Yeah. So it can, um, I don't know that I can necessarily speak for yeah. those people, but what I can say is in the conversations that I've had and in my own experience, following your gut mm -hmm. and being true to your authentic self and being so in tune with who you are is always going to lead you to the right yeah. place and lead you to what is meant for you. 
And I think that would be the through line is that on the other side of coming out, I constantly hear I'm so much happier and I'm so much, um, I feel so much more myself and like in, in my home, in my body and in, in my truth. And it's a long path to get there. It takes a lot and it, the path looks different for everybody. Yeah. And there's prices. Like we, we were just before recording for whoever's listening, we were saying there's, we're all so fortunate to live in a place where gay people are even celebrated and whoever you are, it's not even a conversation. You find safe spaces that celebrate who you are, who you love, but we do know that is not the reality for people around the, the world. Sometimes the most dangerous place to be is their own family. Um, sometimes a country persecutes you for loving who you love. Like, of course, right now we're, you know, we're having fun and talking between friends, but we know that there's also a lot of privilege for in, in our end to be where we are at, you know, to everything. Like there's so many intersectionalities that cross us. Um, and we are very privileged to, you know, even live where we are. Um, but if you had to say something to your younger self, and I would ask you in this moment to take yourself to the moments of fear or of anguish, the moments of, I have to shove this information or I can't be this that I'm feeling, or what would you have liked to know back then? I would have, I would have liked to know I think I think we can relate on on this in that um, one of the most beautiful things about coming out, aside from living your authentic truth and finding a partner and being in love, was the community that came along with it. And I think there's a very universal experience of after coming out, then you're kind of like isolated in your queer group because you just connect so deeply. I think one thing you asked was like, what what is the through line with a lot of the coming out stories? And I think. There's a through line in that we have all had to do deep inner work and go against the grain and, and reject American ideals or societal ideals, wherever you're from, to get to where we are at. And you connect and bond on that. You can't not. So it's it's just natural to want to be around that and and to just feel that camaraderie and wow. you know yeah there's there's just you have to have done a lot of deep inner work like you know to to be there um to be openly out and proud and vulnerable and so there's just already this baseline mm -hmm. of that that you can connect to um but then again just having this beautiful queer community of people who who are so loving and so bold and courageous and have so much insight and you can have incredible conversations and learn something every day and and just have these incredible connections you know there's just there's just depth there's a lot of depth and you know uh on the other point we have been touching on is that you know my girlfriend is persian she comes from iran which is you know, country where it's illegal to be gay and, you know, the importance of that representation and why I make cooking videos, specifically making Persian food and showing our relationship and being very open about it is because we get hundreds of messages, thousands of messages from people in Iran, from people throughout the Middle East or throughout these different, in, in these different countries where it is illegal and punishable to be openly gay and and out in that um it is their only shred of hope and um it just it just keeps you going and you have to feel like there is room for change and that there's possibility in you know in in all of these scenarios and in people's lives and it is not safe for everyone to come out and it is not the best idea for everyone unfortunately um, but if you, you know, do have, you know, the luxury of being somewhere, and I call it a luxury because it is, to, to live yeah. in a place where it is not punishable by jail or death to be gay, um, and 
you know, there's going to be things that you might have to give up, whether it be family or friends or just, you know, whatever it is. Um, but you know, it, it is such a blessing at the end of the day to, to have that ability to live your true life. Yeah. Yeah. I think if I could have told my younger self something, it would have been to follow your gut, even when the entire world Mm -hmm. is telling you like, this isn't right or normal or correct. When you're so deeply connected to what you want and who you are, the right things are going to come and the right people will come and the people who are supposed to fall out of your life will too. And that's a hard thing to accept. You lose people in the process, but you gain the right people too. Yeah. You know, we hold value over certain people in our lives because we're told, but like if, if your parents are not able to actually accept you as you are then they can't truly love you like there there's a there's a harsh reality of it too of like is is a friendship or is a you know a family relationship in which they cannot accept you and cannot love you as you are and make you be a certain way like that is not true love that is not love you know so kind of the acceptance of that and then the moving forward into can i can i find real love in my life whether it be through friendships or through another person which you're in partnership with, through community. I think the answer is yes. And I think that's why there's so much emphasis put on this chosen family aspect of the gay community because it's all of these people who you have some sort of baseline connection with, like, oh, my God, you've been through this too. We've gone through this too. And there's just an understanding and a love there that my family couldn't understand because they haven't been through it, you know? Um, my last question to both of you, if there's any girl out there right now listening to this podcast and something sparks in them, in their gut, um, what would be something you wish you knew to experiment? I'm not saying because the decision comes after, right? And it's a very inward decision, but the exploration should be something we all are free to do, mm-hmm. right? Eventually 100%. hoping, like, I find it so limiting, the idea that someone told me, you're straight. Mm-hmm. And I never got to experiment. Yeah. I'm happy where I'm at, but I'm hoping that if any day I ever get a gut feeling to experiment, that I'm free to do it, regardless of the final decision that yes, will come from yes. it, right? So, like... What would be something you would tell the a girl, younger girls or older girls, doesn't matter, that might feel the need to experiment? Or older women. We were just talking before about like yes. 50, 40, 60 year olds that are starting to question their sexuality now. I have this beautiful, um, she's a friend, a beautiful friend in my family. And she told me, I wish... She's probably in her 50s, and she told me, I wish someone told me being lesbian was an option. And she was like, I didn't even get the the options of it. So about that exploration, like, what would you tell those people that might be inclined to, like, I want to explore my sexuality? Well, first of all, we are in a society that is obsessed with the final destination. It's all about the final destination. It's like work, final destination, career, money, love, partnership. It's all about the final destination. And it's not what it's about at all. It's about the journey. It's about figuring it out. And whatever happens, it's like, you know, you, you again, like Mouse said, you follow your gut every step of the way, whether it's tiny steps, you know, but there is no final destination. You know, even for me, it's like, there is no like, aha, you are lesbian or you are bi. Like you don't get that clarity. It's about like the steps forward and you just take the baby steps and they can be very, very baby steps. Like you can look up lesbian on Google, you know? Like you can listen to Made It Out. Like you can, 
you can take these little steps. You don't have to jump to like, okay, I'm going to go on a date with a woman if that's too much. Like, take the little steps. But also, if you need the permission, me and Alex are here to give you the permission. <laughs> yes! To experiment. experiment. Because sometimes that's all you need is just someone to tell you it's normal and it's okay yeah. and it's... It is celebrated, even if it's not celebrated in your circle. So we're celebrating and it. And look at us, like I would have never met you. Uh, yeah. Like we wouldn't, yeah. our whole entire lives as they are right now, everything, like it wouldn't be, it wouldn't yeah. exist. We like, met through our girlfriends, our best literally. friends. And then me and Alex have just been, I mean, we're just like two peas in a pot. So yeah. This is my best friend. Yeah. And it, yeah. A soul, deep soul connection. And like, you, you don't, you know, again, I, I like to keep it open where it's like anyone, even if they're straight watching this is like, you know, you can have that too. It's about living your authentic truth, whatever that is, you know, and, and to be open to it again, experiment, take the baby steps and, you know, and if we take off the pressure and yes. the weight of labels and of like, do I have to figure myself out? I also think like when we go to an ice cream shop, you can try different flavors. Yes. Mm -hmm. You'll see if you like something or you're going to stick to the vanilla or to the chocolate <laughs> that you've always had, which yeah, is fine. Which is fine. But sin since it doesn't have such a weight on your shoulders, you show up at the ice cream shop and you don't feel... That's, I think, what I would like to give not only myself, but our listeners, and not only in sexuality, but in life. Like, just get off your shoulders all that pressure that makes you think that these decisions are huge. Mm -hmm. They might be, and they might feel like that at some point. But if we're talking about the beginning and the gut feeling and the experimentation and the exploration, you can just try a little ice cream here and there, and you might never, ever go back to mint chocolate chip, you know? Mm -hmm. But then you just might like it and want to have that for I the rest of your it. life. Yeah. And it is the truth, though, like we live in a society where words and labels are still important. So it's like, you know, to the idea of like, I just want to reject all that. Like, it sounds so beautiful, but it's not the word, world we live in. So it's kind of like, OK, while that's still the world we live in, it's like important to still give light to like, OK, like lesbian, like I don't really relate to it, but I'm going to say it because it's not a bad word. And it's, you know, what I I identify as I guess now because I'm really pretty exclusively dating You're women. You're pretty lesbian. Pretty lesbian. <laughs> pretty exclusively <laughs> dating with women. But like, you know, it is like a thing of like, oh yeah, people shouldn't have to come out. But yeah, they do have to because it's the world we live in. So like we still have to talk about these things and we still have to, you know, like be open about them and it's important until, you know, in until whatever hopefully year, we, until whatever year, we yeah. don't have to have this conversation exactly. any longer. Which I think, I, and you I change believe the that. name of your podcast eventually. <laughs> yeah, to, to, to hopefully just, yeah. we don't need it. To yeah. just <laughs> something else. Yeah. Girls, we appreciate so much both of you coming here today. I'm sure we're gonna get a lot of messages that we'll share with you. Let's do an answering questions to all the girls that are exploring yeah. and to do. We'll invite you guys and listen to some audios. That and we'll, would be so fun. We'll give yes. like some um, older sister vibe moments. 100%. Perfect. If you go into the description, there will be a link to say, this is our mailbox, and you can send your question about coming out, exploring with women, and then we'll have these two ladies again answering Woo! their questions. That would be so fun. Yeah, send your audios. Every Thursday, we listen to audios. Uh, from our community and we try to respond but it's always me and Ash it will be fun if you send your audios in English and the four of us respond or maybe just Alex and Mal and we listen to the beautiful <laughs> to the beautiful lesbian world <laughs> or you translate for us yo estoy lesbiana lesbica oh yo soy yo soy lesbiana there we go <laughs> girls thank you so much we'll give um Mucho gusto. We'll leave all the information for Alex and Mal. Mal has a podcast with beautiful stories of people that made it out. And Alex has the best food videos in the universe and in the world. So we'll leave all their information in our um, newsletter. It's for free. And we'll also leave a link in this episode for that. Thank you so much. See you next Tuesday or Thursday. Bye. Bye.